Today I am proud to announce my newest extension for Adobe Premiere Pro which is called Drag Zoom Pro and this is basically a pro version of the extension that I have released earlier this year of 2020 which was called Drag Zoom and the premise of these extensions is basically the same which means that if you need to perform some kind of a digital zoom in animation into your footage instead of fiddling around manually with the position and scale properties in the transform effect if you want to have this nice natural motion blur Instead of doing all that, you can just drag and draw a box around the portion of the frame that you want to zoom into and the extension takes care of everything like the animation, all the calculations of scale, position, keyframes, everything is taken care of. And now in the pro version, I have taken this concept to a whole new level, providing a range of tools that will speed up your workflow even more, make you more productive and make it even more convenient to use this plugin. And also now there is a lot of customizability so you can tweak this around to fit your exact needs. So in this video, I'm going to run through all of the features that are now in the Drag Zoom Pro extension. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we are going to run through three different examples of how I personally use this extension in my work. So let's start with example number one. In this example, we are going to be editing a screencast. And as you can see, we have a clip right here where I do something in Photoshop. And what I want to do is I want to zoom in into this portion of the HSL adjustment while I make changes with the slider. So all you have to do in order to open the extension, if you have it already installed, is go to Window extensions and then select drag zoom pro and it opens up right here and as you can see in order to perform this zooming in animation all you have to do is basically put the playhead at the position where you want it to happen so right here i'm starting to move these sliders so right now what we need to do is we need to hit refresh and then when we do that we are going to see the current frame right here in this ui of the extension and right now we can just drag around a box and as you can see in this yellow text, you can see that you can hold space to move it. And you can also hit escape in order to cancel. So if I hit escape, it is going to cancel out. So that's not a problem. So let's actually perform some kind of a zoom in animation. So I'm just going to drag it. I'm just going to move it. And somewhere around these HSL sliders, if I let go of the mouse, you can see that the animation is being performed. And right here in the extension, you can see that we are currently zoomed into this portion of the frame while we have the entire frame as a reference point. If you want to perform some kind of a different animation, for instance, in this part of the frame, I'm just gonna hit escape in order to cancel for now. And as you can see, if I scrub through here, we see that we are having this nice animation. If I play it back, it zooms in nicely into just the portion of the frame that we want. So how convenient is that? Instead of fiddling around with the position and scale properties, setting the appropriate shutter angle and everything in the transform effect, you have it all taken care of and the effect is already amazing. So let's see how we can customize this. So right now up top, as you can see, you can change the duration of this transition. By default, it is 0.3 seconds, but if you want to make it longer, that is not a problem. And by the way, if we scroll down here in the effects control, you can see that the extension added a transform effect and it placed those keyframes right here. So let's say that I want to zoom out, but right now I want to use the transition duration of two seconds. So I can just type two in here. I can advance this further in time. Then if you want to refresh the view, what you see right here in the extension with what you are currently seeing on your timeline, you can just hit refresh again. And now it refreshed. And if you want to zoom out to 100%, you can do it conveniently with just the click of one button right here. So if we do that, Let's zoom out here. As you can see, the transition now takes longer. And indeed, if I scroll back and play it back, it now zooms out smoothly using a transition duration of two seconds. And if you feel like you made a mistake and if you want to undo, there's actually an undo button here. The reason for the undo button right here on the extension is that the control or command Z, the default undo command in Adobe Premiere Pro is not going to work here. And this is merely a limitation of Adobe Premiere Pro's extension API. This is not something that I overlook, but the extension API is basically how much the developers of Adobe Premiere Pro are allowing us extension developers developers to change stuff inside Premiere using our program code. So we don't have a full access to the undo redo stack. So this is something that we just cannot do with the current version of the API, but I have found a workaround and that way I have placed a separate button which you can hit undo and it will remove those keyframes. Actually, a lot of customers of the drag zoom, the non-pro version were complaining about the thing that they let go of the mouse accidentally and there is no way to undo. So guess what? 
right now there is. And it's as simple as just hitting this undo right here, as you can see those keyframes are removed and the playhead position is being reset back to this place where you performed the accidental zoom in animation. So let's zoom out again and right now if you want to zoom in again to the same portion of the frame, for instance if you want to go back to the same HSL settings right here in this example of the screencast, all you have to do is just you can use the recent list of the recent zooms and right now you can just select this one and that way you get back to this exact framing that you have before. So if you want to have consistency in the way that you change your framing in your screencast, you can definitely do that by making use of the recent zooms list right here. And if you feel like one of those zooms is something that you want to add to your favorites, because for instance, maybe you use this kind of a zoom in across different projects and you want to have consistency across projects, you know that you're going to use it in different projects, you can actually add it to your favorites. And to do that, all you have to do is basically hit this little star right here here. You can give it a custom name. Let's give it the name of test one, for instance, we can hit save. And right now you have the list of favorites. There's already something that I have added here before, which are going to get into just a second. But right here, you also have the test one. If you hover over here, and if you also hover over the recent, you can see kind of this green preview of what will be the framing if you decide to click and use this zoom. So right now I can also rename this. If I want to rename it to, I don't know, test two, I can do that. I can hit save and it's renamed. And also you can delete it if you feel like you don't need it anymore. If you further examine the what you have available right here in the extension, you can see there's this check mark in order to disable the transition duration altogether. And we will be making use of that in my next example. But right now, let's actually check out what we have in settings and what can we customize as to the behavior of this extension. So we are going to skip this help tab because basically right here, you have all the information. If you ever get lost, you have my email, you have a link to this video you're watching right now, but we are going to jump into settings. And right now in settings, you have a couple of very useful options. So first of all, you can actually snap your zoom to the nearest increment. Because normally, as you can see, if I'm dragging right here, you can see that the scale preview right here in this blue font is showing you a value with a decimal with two places. And maybe you don't really need that kind of fluidity and you would rather snap it to the nearest whole percent. So you can do that. I'm just gonna hit escape here. And in settings, you can enable this snapping to nearest 1%. And as you can see now, it is using only 1% increments. There are no decimal points anymore. So escape again. Also, you can select nearest 5% and nearest 10%. I feel that the 10% is actually the most handy. So again, as an example, it just uses a 10% increments. And this is also something that people were requesting. So there we go. The next thing that you can customize is the shutter angle. You can choose uh, from zero to 360 degrees. And this basically corresponds to how much motion blur do you have in your transition. If you don't know what shutter angle means. Basically, the higher the shutter angle, the more the motion blur you have in your transition. The most natural motion blur is considered to be 180 degrees and that's why that is the default. But if you want something with less motion blur, you can choose like 45 degrees on something. And if you want more motion blur, you can use even 360 degrees. So that's something that is up to you. The next thing that you can do, which is very, very useful, is you can enable snapping to grid lines. So if we enable that, what you can see right here, if I start to drag, you can see this cross and this borders in blue. And if I hold the space in order to move it, as you can see, if I approach the middle line, it will snap to middle line, which is indicated by it turning into the red color. So right now I am in the middle vertically. If I move here, I am also in the middle horizontally. So I am dead on the center. If I want to snap to one of the edges, it will also kind of snap to an edge, which is very, very handy. So now you can snap to edges Super, super handy. Okay, let's see what other options do we have. So right here, you can also change your transition interpolation. The default one is linear, but you can also choose the is in and out. And let me actually present what it means if you use is in and out, because this is also something that is a limitation of Adobe Premiere Pro extension API. I cannot actually change the temporal interpolation of individual keyframes, but what I can do is I can stick in a bunch of keyframes in between and shape the curve sort of in a way that it would be shaped if you have used the default Premiere Pro's is in or out. So let me show you what exactly does that mean. So if we go back here, let me actually remove this transform and let's start from scratch. So let's back up a little bit, let's refresh. And right now I have this is in and out as a transition interpolation and we can use one of our recent zooms. So let's use this one again. And right now, as you can see, what happened is that we have a bunch of keyframes that are ensuring that our animation is actually starting slowly and also ending slowly. So that's something that you can do as well. And I would definitely 
highly recommend doing that, especially if your transitions are like longer than one second, it is definitely noticeable and it looks way more natural if you use this easing function in your transitions. And the last two settings that are available here is to add markers, which means that if you enable that, the Drag Zoom Pro will actually add markers to your footage, indicated where a transition is happening. And I also find it very, very useful. So let me demonstrate how that works. We can go back here and let's say that we want to zoom out back to 100%, so let's do that. And right here you can see there you have this marker and the duration of this marker exactly matches the duration of the transition. As you can see it starts here and it ends here and also if we decide to undo both the keyframes and the marker is gone, which is again very convenient. And the last setting that we have right here is the maximum scale. So as you can see normally if I start dragging it starts at 600, so let me cancel out. But if you feel like you don't need anything more than let's say 300, you can cap it right here. So you can select 300. And right now, if you start dragging, it will go no further than 300%, which can be handy in some situations. This is also something that people requested. So I added this as an option. So right now, let me actually show you a second example of how I use this extension in my workflow, which is to edit talking head videos. The video right here that you are seeing is basically a single camera angle. And every time I need to make a cut because I misspoke or I, you know, said something that I wasn't supposed to, I would make a cut. And if you just make a straight cut and if you don't have a second angle or a B-roll to cover the cut, it looks very jarring. So what usually people do, like definitely on YouTube, this is very popular, is that they will zoom in digitally after making the cut and it sort of seems like they have changed the camera angle. So if you're cutting the footage when you are just talking to the camera and every single time that you have a cut, you can oscillate between the full version, cropped in full, cropped in full, cropped in. And this is exactly how I use that. And for that, we are going to be zooming in without the transition altogether, because after all, you have a hard cut and you don't want to transition over this cut, right? So let me show you how it works in this extension. So right now we have this other timeline. As you can see, we have a talking head part and we have two cuts. If I play it back, you can see this cut looks pretty jarring. And also right here, if I play it back, you can definitely see the cut that was happening right here. And all I have to do is pretty much just place my playhead at the very beginning of this second clip. And then for this purpose, we will disable the transition duration and we are going to use one of my favorites. And this is a 110% zoom at top middle. This is how I named it. And as you can see, it will snap into the top edge of my frame and zoom in by 110%. And this is something that I use for my talking head videos. So right now I don't even need to refresh. Basically the refresh right here is just telling this UI to refresh, but right here I don't need to refresh because I already know what kind of transition that I want to perform. So you can omit this step, I can just click right here. And as you can see, we have zoomed in by 110% and we are stuck at this top edge, which is exactly what I want in this kind of framing. And right now, because I already have a cut, it will just go back to full. So if you play this back, you can see we have full, then we have cropped in after the cat. And then after the this clip is over, we are cutting back to the full frame. And this is again, super, super handy. And something that I'm using throughout pretty much every single YouTube video that I make right now. I have it as my favorite because I use it across all of the projects and I don't need to fiddle around with the scale and position. And every single time I have a consistent change between the full and cropped in version if I'm shooting videos in the studio right here. And that leads us to our last example, which is editing footage that has a higher resolution than the resolution of our timeline. And this is very typical if you are working with something like time lapses, for instance, you have time lapses. Even if you have a cheap camera, you can definitely produce a time lapse that has like a 5K or even 6K resolution. And if you don't know how to do that, I actually have a separate video. You can check it out right here. So you have your time lapse that has a higher resolution but you are sticking it in into like a 1080p timeline and what you want to do for instance you want to zoom into portions of this time lapse but you want to retain the full resolution and if you want to do that without losing the resolution and with using this uh, motion blur with your animations with your transitions actually Premiere Pro has a bug that if you enable the shutter angle that is any other than zero which means that you enable the motion blur in your animation it will start to behave very very weirdly and actually I can link down in the description to an article and some kind of an Adobe community post when you can read all about this weird behavior. But right now, because you are using this extension, this extension can actually do all the calculations in order to compensate for this weird behavior in Premiere. So you can use full resolution and use those nice transitions. So let me show you how to do that at the next example. 
So right here we have this time lapse and this is the time lapse of a pretty epic sunrise by the way and as you can see this time lapse is in 4K resolution and we are working with a 1080p timeline. So normally what you want to do in order to scale it down to fit the timeline resolution you would right click and select either scale to frame size or set to frame size and typically setting to frame size is preferred and if you want to make it work with Drag Zoom Pro without losing resolution you definitely want to set to frame size so just click that and as you can see now we have the full resolution we can scrub through, you can see that the sun is moving across the frame and what setting to frame size did is basically it scaled it down by 50% right here in the motion property. And right now if you would like to perform zoom in animations with motion blur you would have to nest this clip and then on the nested clip you would have to zoom into it. But if you do that on a nested clip you're not getting back those pixels that were scaled down, you're basically zooming in and Premiere Pro is calculating those new pixels that are needed for the upscaling on their own so you are losing your quality of the original time-lapse but with Dragon Pro that is not the case so let me show you what I mean let me actually enable that because I want to use transitions with this maybe 0.3 would be what I want and let's say that we want to start our zoom in somewhere here so I'm gonna hit refresh and right now as you can see you have the entire frame right here that you are seeing it also shows up right here in the extension and what Drag Zoom Pro did at this point as you can see it scaled up back to 100% but it's scaled down to 50% right here in the transform and that way if we zoom in to like 200% we are just going to be having a 100% scale right here which means the entire resolution and the entire quality of our original time lapse. So let's zoom in 200% right here. So I'm just going to draw a box 200, move it here, let go of the mouse and we are zoomed in right here. So let me actually move this playhead a little bit more and at this position of the sun we are going to zoom into 100% but in the middle so I'm just going to again refresh as you can see it refreshed the frame so I'm just going to drag another box 200% in the middle I'm using the snapping to grid lines as you can see which is super handy in this case so I'm just letting go of my mouse right here and now it's zoomed in right here and then advance the playhead again and somewhere around here I want to zoom into again 200% but this time the top right corners and now I am zoomed in right here and if I play this back look how beautiful this transitions look. Now we are going to be changing the position to the middle, nice motion blur and then we are going to change it into the top right position and now really really beautiful. And as you can see we are using the full resolution because I am now zoomed into 200% but it actually means 100% here in the transform and also 100% in the motion properties which means we are retaining the full quality and if you don't believe me I actually have a comparison which I have did this exact maneuver on a high resolution screencast and I compared the quality of doing that with Drag Zoom Pro and doing it manually when I first scaled down to setting to frame size to 50% in the motion properties then I nested it and then I zoomed in manually which means that I'm not getting back those pixels that I scaled down before so let me show you the comparison between those two very quick so what we have right here is the screencast and I'm just gonna advance it somewhere here until I zoom in on these presets and then this is the high resolution one and then let's do the same on the low resolution one so just advance somewhere here and now let's compare how this text is being rendered on these two so this is the low resolution and this is the high resolution and as you can see in this one the quality of this text is much much higher which means that we are indeed producing a higher quality video in the end which is definitely you know should be appreciated right so if you want to get this extension for yourself head over to the description of this video where you will find all the necessary informations about how to get this plugin and start using it yourself so as you can see the drag zoom pro extension is packed with a lot of very handy functionalities i use it all the time to edit my talking head videos and also to edit my screen recordings in my premiere pro tutorials and if you want to check out my premiere pro tutorials you can click on the playlist right here and especially check out the video right here where i explain how to make very efficient and very flexible edits don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe right here for future videos see you next time hopefully and bye bye